The screen is formatted with multiple fields. The first line has a protected and intensified field with the label name, an unprotected field that's to the right of it that holds up to 20 characters, and the remainder of the line is a protected field. The first four positions of this first line are actually the last part of a final field. If you look down at the bottom, you see the word here. That begins a field that wraps around. Line two has the protected label ID and a five position numeric field. You can only enter digits here. The rest of that line is protected. Line three has a protected label notes and following it is a long unprotected field that's really lines three, four, and five. Down at the very bottom, you see the last unprotected field that starts on line 24 with the word here, and it continues to the end of that line and then wraps around to the top. In addition, on the screen, you see five sets of protected fields, which are set up for use with the light pen or the cursor select key. The first three are selection types with a leading question mark. You can switch to a greater than sign if you select it. You can toggle these on and off but it doesn't send any message to the mainframe. To send a message to the mainframe, you select one of the last two protected fields. They're called attention types. When the light pens touch to them or cursor select, when you put the cursor in them, they generate an event sent to the mainframe. That mainframe application will then read any modified fields that include the selections from those first three choices, sex, drugs, or rock and roll. Between the unprotected fields for input, the light pen fields, the label fields, and all the protected blank areas in between, we have a total of 20 fields defined. We begin with the cursor set in the first unprotected field, where we would enter a name. We can move the cursor around the screen by using arrow, backspace, and new line keys. Watch as I move the cursor, seeing it will jump from one edge. It's going to go off the left edge and wrap around to the right edge. If I go up, it's going to move up and shows up down on the line 24. New line works the same way. It jumps to the beginning of each new line and when it gets to 24, it'll wrap around again to line one. Backspace is equivalent to the left arrow key. So if I hit that, it jumped to the very bottom of this again and I go forward and it's in the upper left. Below line 24, so this terminal is lines 1 through 24 with columns 1 to 80 left to right. There's a special 25th line called the status or the operator information area. We can see indications of terminal status across the bottom. There is a 4 in a, in a little rectangle there and a symbol A and those indicate we're connected to a 3070, 3174 control unit and the letter A says we have a primary connection. The third column character tells us we're logically connected to some mainframe application. Now these arrow keys that I showed, left and right, they move one step per key push unless I hold the Alt key down and then they jump two at a time. If I hold Alt down and hit the backspace key, that creates a special function called Home that jumps to the beginning of the first unprotected field. There's also tab and back tab. Tab allows us to move to each unprotected field. Back tab goes backwards. If we're part way through a field, back tab just jumps to the beginning of that field. Each keycap has one to three characters or functions that are assigned to it. The lower position on the top of the key is the normal or the unshifted value. For example, the letter A or the letter D. An upper position on the keycap shows you a different character that would be selected if you hold the number shift. It's sort of an up arrow looking key. If you hold that down while you press the key, instead of it being the letter S, it's a greater than sign. A key with a lock symbol is the number lock. You hit it, it toggles the machine between being shifted up and you can see the little up shift symbol here on the status line. Hit it again and it goes back to normal. Whenever we're in numeric shift, you see that symbol. If I hold down Alt and hit a key, we select a function that's written on the side of the keycap. So to give you an example, um, we look at the right hand uh, matrix of the keypad, which has all three types of functions on it. So the upper left key, if I just hit it in normal, non-shifted mode, I get 
program function one, PF1 uh, is recognized. If I hold numeric shift and hit it, it's a seven, and we just saw seven displayed up on the screen. If I hold alt and hit it, it's PF13 instead and does not enter a character. Anytime the terminal is numeric shifted, but we want to get a lower um, type of character. So, for example, I've toggled to numeric shift now, and I'm just getting the upper parts, but that same K key that's giving me a 5 will also give me a K if I hold the downshift. So there's a downshift. It looks like a downward arrow. And I hold that and hit it, and the K shows up, and the shift symbol went away temporarily. So it's a way of overriding the numeric mode. We can only enter data while we're in an unprotected field. So this is an unprotected field, but if I go over to the label, that's protected. And if I tried to enter the letter M there, um, we see an error message and keyboard actions are blocked until I reset the terminal. Each unprotected field is a fixed length. Generally, the field is populated with all null characters. However, the application can choose to put any initial value it wants, just as I put the word here down at the beginning of this field. The name field is 20 columns wide. I'll type in some value. If I start typing in a name like John Doe, I could continue if I got to the 20th character and filled it in the terminal would auto skip to the next unprotected field, It would basically do the equivalent of a tab. But I won't do that here because I've typed the length of the name. I don't need the remaining space, so instead I'll just hit the tab key and it jumps to ID. Now when we got to ID, the machine automatically shifted into number mode. So num locks on there and I can only type the keys that correspond to numeric digits. So let me put in a uh, some kind of a code here and it now it's jumped to notes and notes is a regular text field that I could type. If I had tried to put something up in that field that wasn't a number like the letter A for example we can see that the terminal locked up because it's not a valid entry character. The way the skipping is enabled is the field that goes after the unprotected field. So there's a third field that has the continuation of that second line. There's the protected ID field. We have the actual entry field that's five characters long and then a protected one. And if the protected one has a particular code in it, it causes auto skip. It says when you finish entering data in this five digit field, jump to the next unprotected field. If I didn't put that special code in, instead it would have just dumped to the very next field, such as the word notes, which is not uh, can't be typed over, so that wouldn't be very helpful. The cursor is positioned in a field that I want to change. So, for example, if I want John Doe is really row, type the I, R there, and it's replaced the D with an R in that field. That's you know, what you would uh, expect it to do, and most of the time that's good, but let's let's say, um, you know, we're doing something um, and we realize that uh, that we have an extra letter in there. It's really John Ree, not John Rowe. So I can hit the delete key and it um, eliminates that spare one and brings the rest of the field to the right, is shifted over to fill in the space. Now, because it's moved things to the left, it's added nulls at the end to, to fill out that field. So that, that's pretty helpful, but uh, you might say, I, I don't always have extra characters. Sometimes I type a long word and forgot to put um, an important letter in. So let's say in this case, rather than re, it's rice. We want that name to be rice. I could retype ICE from this point, see? But let's say I don't want to do that. Let's go back and delete those two characters again. I can use insert mode. So if I hit insert mode, this little symbol shows up. And now every character I type pushes the rest of the field to the right and squeezes those characters in. So that's pretty handy. And uh, all I need to do to reset 
this special mode is hit reset. Now, if I had already filled the field, now we'll go down, for example, to this numeric one, and I could try insert mode, but I can't insert another character because the field's already full. So I got the error. Um, I would have to, let's say I delete it first, and now I have room. So I can go into insert mode and add another digit. So the space bar is producing a character. It's not a null. So if you fill a field like um, the, the rest of the name field up here, if I fill the rest of this with spaces, I can no longer insert things. I can't go to that, uh, that field and try to add something in because there's no room. The spaces fill up the field. There are a lot of um, sort of miscellaneous or less used keys. So for example, I can hit the click key and now when I type characters, we can hear it much louder. I'll turn that off. There's a cursor blink and that makes that cursor flash rather than be steady. You can toggle that on and off. I can select alternate cursor and that gives me a reverse video uh, filled in square as a cursor rather than the, um, the, the underline that was there before. I'll put this back to sort of normal cursor. There are two special uh, capabilities, field mark and dupe. And they're put in unprotected fields as a way of reducing how many characters have to be transmitted between the control unit and the mainframe because that control unit might be connected over a slow telecommunications link. So um, every time you enter data into a field, like this name field that's 20 long, because I've typed things into it, the terminal marked it is modified. Whenever I signal the mainframe by, say, hit or hitting the enter key, the mainframe is going to read just the modified fields. That reduces what has to go back because the programmer knows the contents of all the other fields that aren't modified, so they don't need to transfer them back. But field mark further cuts this down. Field mark says, don't even send all 20 characters. Start sending the name field, but as soon as you see the field mark character, stop. So if it's a short name, it might only need five or eight or 10 rather than all 20 characters. And dupe is kind of a similar thing. Dupe says, if you've been repetitively typing things into this form for different names and IDs, and I put dupe in a field, that means Take the last value I entered the last time I typed things and hit enter and use that for this field instead. So it's a shorthand that means they only have to transfer the one dupe character rather than a lot of others. Now I had mentioned at the beginning these light pen um, fields down here. Early 3270 models had a light pen attached which was a pen shaped object with a fiber optic cable and when you touched it to the screen, it would detect where it was touched. Um, and you could use that to select choices from a menu, for example. Um, so in, in this case, I have a menu of three choices, sex, drugs, or rock and roll, and we can select those. Now, I don't happen to have a light pen. That didn't come with the 3178. But there is a key called cursor select that does the same thing. So if I move the cursor with the arrow keys into one of these fields, like I've got it in the middle of drugs now, and I hit cursor select, we see that the question mark was changed into a greater than sign. That means I've selected that choice. I could change my mind and hit cursor select again and it goes back. But instead I'm going to select all of these choices because I'm a child of the 60s. Oops, I've gone the wrong way. Down we go. Okay, now they're all selected. Then below that, there are two lines, and those are called action fields. They don't start with a question mark or a greater than sign. And so if they're selected with a light pen, they generate an event to the mainframe. It's kind of like the enter button or um, attention button or the other keys that signal the mainframe. And that tells the mainframe some choices have been made. Go ahead and look at what choices were selected with the light pen. Now, there might be multiple action items. I have here party and here. One of them might be cancel and the other might be enter. So, for example, I can have somebody fill out the form and decide not to do anything with it at all and cancel out of the, the operation. 
The terminal has three function keys that erase parts of the screen. I'm going to describe their role with a normal or a formatted screen that has fields in it, but then I'll cover how it's different, slightly different, for a screen that has no fields at all. So the erase EOF erases data in some unprotected field to the end of that field. So let me go up to the um, to the top uh, field. Now I'm in part of the name field, and I'm going to scroll over a little bit. So I'm part way into it, and when I hit erase EOF, we see it erases from the cursor through the end of the field, but nothing else. On the other hand, there's this wonderful field uh, key called erase input that will erase all of the unprotected fields. So the name, the ID, the blank notes, and the word here that I pre-populated. So let me select erase input, and we see that's exactly what happened. And then finally, there's the clear function. And what clear does is it erases everything on the screen, including all the field definitions. So all the formatting is gone after I do a clear. Um, and this converts it into an unformatted um, screen where I can go type all sorts of things and do whatever I want through it. Now I mentioned that these, these functions will operate differently depending um, on whether we're in this uh, unformatted screen or an, a regular one with fields. So erase EOF erases from where the cursor is all the way to the bottom of the screen, but nothing above it. Erase input is going to erase every single thing that you see on the screen. And of course we know what clear does. That completes all the keys that have effects on the terminal screen. The remaining keys don't do anything to this terminal, but they create events that are sent to the mainframe. The terminal control units are polled continuously, but they only send something back to the mainframe when an event key is pressed. The application program and the driver software and the operating system decides what to do depending on the particular event key that's pressed. But all these are doing is sending an event and then it's up to the definition in the operating system and in the application. So the most common event keys are enter. Hit enter, that's typically what you do to send a screen after you filled in all the fields. ATTN, attention. They're program action and program function. So the three program action keys, PA1, PA2, and PA3, do some action with the program, but it's really just a code sent back. Then there are 24 program function keys, PF1 through PF24. Again, all depends on the particular software you're using as to what those are assigned to do. There are a few other keys that cause events here. So there's a print key on the keyboard, and if I hit print, it's going to uh, try to print what's on my screen to some associated printer. And then to undo that, I can hit the device cancel, devs cancel. There's a test uh, button that requests some tests from the, the mainframe system. There's an ident that asks the software to send back a uh, system numbering or uh, an ID that I could use if I'm filling out, say, a trouble report. The system request requests some functionality from the system. And then the clear, as we know, not only erases the screen, but it sends back uh, an event to the mainframe to let it know it's done that. All of this functionality is implemented by a combination of this hardware shield on an Arduino and some Python programming running in the laptop. And that's what's implementing the 3174 control unit functions.